plastics, as we said, are man-made synthetic materials and the feedstock to make them is the waste product of fossil carbon refinery for fuel. And this waste product kind of gave rise to this whole chemical industry. And plastics are incredibly useful. I, I don't want to let there be any doubt about that, including for preserving food stuff. The problem with the material is that it's not inert. So that means that chemically it can interact with the environment it comes in contact with or with the food stuff in, in the case of food packaging. And we call that migration. Mm. So migration, chemical migration basically describes the transfer of chemicals from the packaging into the food stuff. Mm. And that happens for smaller molecules. I don't know how much chemistry you want to go into, but basically when you make plastics, you polymerize these molecules that we call monomers. So these are waste products of our refinery. They're small molecules and with a very clever, complex, aggressive chemical reaction, a chain reaction, we make big polymer molecules. So that's up to 10,000 repeats of your monomer unit. It's one big molecule. And the polymer is what gives your plastic its moldability because it's a big molecule. It moves slowly. It's waxy. And that gives you this formability, moldability, incredibly useful property of plastics. Now, when you make plastics, you have the monomers, you have a couple of catalysts, and those chemicals are not pharmaceutically pure grade, right? So you buy whatever you get on the market at a good price. And so maybe you've got 80, maybe 90% purity, and the other 10 or 20% is gunk. But that gunk will also be part of your chemical reaction, and that will also be present in your finished plastic. And so you actually have a lot of different chemicals that make up plastic. And this is what fascinates me about this topic. And it has for the last 16 years that I've been working on this. Even the people who manufacture plastics don't know the exact chemical composition of the finished material. And so we're putting this material in contact with food. We know that its chemical constituents can transfer from packaging into food. But we don't know exactly what those chemicals are.